A couple of weeks ago I received this big parcel which contained the individual parts of a prototype Moai SLA 3D printer that is currently on Kickstarter. In comparison to traditional 3D printers that basically use molten plastic to construct an object, an SLA 3D printer uses a UV laser that hardens a UV sensitive resin to do the same. Now of course the Kickstarter campaign presents all the amazing features the Moai 3D printer has to offer. But the question is, how easy is it to build? Does it print without any problems? And what do I think could be enhanced? Let's find out. First off, I have to say that all the printer parts inside the parcel were nicely packaged, sometimes even a bit too well. After unpacking and inspecting every single component, I did not notice any kind of recognizable damage either. So it was time to print out the building instructions, which consisted of clear pictures and a short description, which always mentions the necessary screw type. Since the screw bags were all nicely labeled, it was quick and easy to find the right ones. I started the building process by connecting the 8 pieces of maker slides to create the main cuboid structure of the printer. Afterwards, I secured the Z-axis with stepper motor to the back of the structure, mounted the metal piece for holding the resin vat along with an additional lifting motor in the middle of the cuboid and attached the bottom plate. Next, I inserted and mounted the front plates, which brings me to my first small complaint. Some screws were missing. But since M3 screws are not rare nowadays, it was not a problem to find a suitable replacement. So I continued by mounting the X and Y galvanometer drivers and the laser with mirror reflection system to the bottom plates and the rotary encoder for controlling the printer to the front plate. Through the help of the wiring schematic, I then connected all the electronics boards to one another, added the complementary metal sheet to the VAT holder and already started mounting the black acrylic cover to the front side of the printer. I sat already here because I was almost done with the building process, after only 3 hours, which is by far the shortest amount of time that I required to assemble a 3D printer kit. But as a compensation for this positivity, I have to say that, for example, the standoffs for the front door of the printer were not mentioned in the instructions. But nevertheless, after securing the main power switch, the backplate and the DC jack, I finished the power wiring, plugged in the power brick, inserted the VATS and build platform and finally turned on the machine. After changing the Z reset position of the printer, the build platform lowered onto the VATS and it was time to level it by adjusting the four nuts underneath it. Then I cut out a circle template provided by the manufacturer, placed it inside the VATS and used the SD cards with the included Yuan test codes to check the functionality of the laser system. And while working with such a laser, even though it only has a power of 150 milliwatts, it is always recommended to use laser safety glasses. Now, as you can see, the circle created by the laser looked pretty accurate, at least after I realized that I accidentally connected the X galvo to the Y driver and vice versa. So that means that the printer was properly calibrated, and it was time to attach the remaining two side covers and install the QR software. There I entered the machine settings provided by the manufacturer and imported the MOI printing profile. After importing the ring test STL file, I saved its slice G code to the SD card and started the first test print with it. As you can see, it was a dry print, meaning without the resin, in order to see whether the printer moves like it's supposed to. Since that was apparently the case, I put on disposable gloves and opened a can of the resin, which has a very neon green unnatural color. But nevertheless, I filled up the vat to one fifth of its height with the resin and started the print. And even though all the motors and the lasers seemed to work during the printing process, no traces of solid resin were found. So I tried recalibrating the machine and started a couple more test prints with the benchmark G-code of the manufacturer, only to find out that this didn't change anything, 
but what stood out to me was that the laser spots looked a bit unfocused, and changing the position of the laser itself did not fix this problem. Thankfully though, the manufacturer sent me a new one, which I immediately secured in its rightful place. After trying out the ring code once again, this time without the build platform, I immediately noticed that the laser was much brighter and also focused. Therefore, it was no surprise that finally something solid was created with the resin. And after reinstalling the build platform and restarting the print, the machine finally worked like it was supposed to and created the intended object without any problems. To finalize the print though, I got myself isopropanol, which I filled into one small container and brought in another container with plain water. After removing the print from the build platform, I dropped it into the isopropanol, moved it around, cleaned it in the water and repeated this process three times before letting the print dry and cure for a couple more hours. And while that was happening, I downloaded a model of a whistle and a boat from Thingiverse, sliced them and printed them as well without any problems. Once I treated those objects with the isopropanol bath, I was pleasantly surprised with the quality of the prints. I mean the boat, which is like a benchmark for 3D printers, came out way better than I expected. And it is quite amazing how much detail this SLA 3D printing technique can capture. But not only that, if we compare the noise level of my Delta printer to the noise level of the SLA printer, then it is clear which one can be used in a quiet work environment. And while I printed the ring model on the Delta printer, which was not a good idea to begin with, it took around 17.5 minutes while the SLA printer required around 22.5 minutes for the same task. Seems like the molten plastic is faster, but the PLA version actually used a layer height of 0.2mm and the resin version a layer height of 0.1mm, which means that the SLA machine is definitely quicker. The only big negative aspect for me is that the UV resin is a more brittle material in comparison to ABS and PLA. And working with it as well as the isopropanol requires a bit of extra care and a well ventilated room, since it all smells a bit funny. But all in all, I do like the Moai 3D printer. While I do think that they could have improved the door and that the acrylic glass attracts dust way too much, the product does work and produces amazing prints that I will definitely use in the future. And with that being said, I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.